Greetings, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 6, Genetic Change. This is video number 9 and the last in our first little inquiry question on mutations and changes in the DNA. And this time we're going to look at the bigger implications by looking at the gene pool. So what we have to do is we need to evaluate the effect of mutation, gene flow and genetic drift on the gene pool of populations. So we need to make sure that we understand some of these key terms. We need to know what the gene pool is and how things like genetic genetic drift can uh, have an impact on the gene pool. We also need to explain about mutations and evaluate each of those key areas of mutation, gene flow and genetic drift on the gene pool of different populations. So in our last video we had a little bit of a look at the sources of variation and particularly we focused on some of those key aspects of um, the process of meiosis and how things like independent assortment, random segregation and crossing over can have an impact as well as sexual reproduction itself on the type uh, and range of variation that we can have in populations. One of the things that we have identified though through hopefully throughout this whole first section of our um, study of genetic change is that mutation is a prime source of genetic variation. So it is something that we're going to um, I guess build a lot of what we talk about on the back of. Mutations in the germ lines are particularly important because they get passed on from uh, one generation to the next. So any mutations that happen in the formation of sperm or eggs have the potential to be passed on to future generations and therefore they will appear in a gene pool where they weren't present before and potentially depending on the factors associated uh, with the population can therefore change in frequency as well. Mutations are likely to either introduce new alleles with new traits or sometimes they might remove alleles and therefore eliminate traits. So either way, we have a change in the gene pool of the population. And just so we're clear, the gene pool is the sum total of all of the genes or all of the alleles, if you like, uh, in a particular population. Now, all of those can potentially be um, acted upon by the forces associated with natural selection. So what we're trying to do is to see if we can understand some of the ways in which those allele frequencies or those genes, uh, I guess in total, can appear or disappear or change within a population of organisms. One of the ways in which this can happen is a phenomenon known as gene flow. Gene flow is the transfer of genetic information from one population to another. Often the populations have been separated by some sort of a barrier and it could be a geographical barrier like the mountain that you sort of see in the back of this slide. If two populations are separated for some time and then um, breed within the individual populations, they can speciate. They can create um, two populations which will therefore no longer interbreed with one another. And we've seen some examples of this happening, uh, for example, on the Galapagos Islands. But it is possible prior to speciation that alleles from one population, maybe because they're birds that can fly or maybe because there's a flood that, that has two separated ponds now rejoining, uh, or maybe some fish can um, crawl their way across from one um, pond to another. And as a result of that, bring alleles from one population that has been separated for a little while into another one. Such transfers or flow of genetic information from one population to another are usually horizontal. And that is that it's basically just a, a walking of one, or a, a, not necessarily a walking, but a movement of one um, gene or allele from one population uh, into another. Hybridization can also be a way in which this kind of gene flow can uh, occur. And the important thing is that the fitness of the population and the survival rate of the population can also be increased by uh, this kind of introduction of new genes, or at least genes that exist in one population that have then been transferred into another. So a lot of this is really around um, some sort of a barrier and then a way in which uh, that barrier is crossed so that we can have some populations shifting their gene pools in isolation and then uh, maybe through some sort of um, 
maybe a random event, um, maybe something that just happened that allowed a previous barrier to now be crossed is introducing new alleles into a population. Another way in which the um, gene pool can change, in which the proportion of alleles in a particular population may change is known as genetic drift. Now, there are mechanisms of evolution where the allele frequencies in a population are just randomly changed. And there's no particular way we can go and study these, and especially we can't study these in retrospect. So if changes have happened to populations as a result of genetic drift, it can be very difficult to identify the cause of those changes. Genetic drift is a change in the frequency of alleles due to a sampling uh, error. So it's basically something that happens um, that, that isn't... Um, that we can't sort of predetermine, that we can't um, explain in an easy way. For example, if the weather changes and, and it gets colder and we see that there's a shift in the population towards the individuals that have uh, thicker coats or a, or a better ability to keep warm, then we can kind of explain that. That makes sense. It makes sense that um, individuals that are able to resist um, a snap change in the, in the temperature of the environment have a better chance of survival. This is um, one of the, I guess, simplest examples of genetic drift can be simply what happens when you go out for a walk and you happen to step on some ants or you um, get uh, stung by a particular bee or something. Um, both of these social insects, are, there's a slight difference in terms of just the way that the gene populations occur. But this is kind of the idea. So think about something that happens that's just a random thing. It's not necessarily to do with, with how fast or how slow or how smart um, that particular individual is. It just happens to be in the wrong place at the wrong time or the right place at the right time. And as a result, um, its proportion, the genes that it's carrying, um, can increase or decrease in the population as a result. Genetic drift does happen in populations of all sizes, but the effects tend to be stronger in smaller populations. And we've talked a little bit about the idea of bottlenecks. And that's where populations get very, very low. And so any, of, any genetic drift that happens in a situation like that can have a massive change in the proportion of particular genes or alleles in the population. The smaller the population, the greater the chances of alleles actually being lost altogether um, during these processes, which don't necessarily directly relate to that um, idea of natural selection that we've talked about previously. Nice little graphic here, and again, a shout out to Brooke um, for the great work that you've done in setting up uh, the bio site. Uh, this uh, is, I guess, a nice little infographic of some of the ways that we can identify variation. Now, now variation too is something that can happen at the individual level and the population level, and that's one of the messages we've been trying to send through this topic, through this module. Um, and we've looked at mutation, we've looked at sexual reproduction, the recombining of different uh, combinations of alleles. We've now looked at genetic flow, where we can have the movement of uh, alleles from one population to another as they overcome some sort of barrier which separated them. Uh, we've seen genetic drift, just those chance events which um, you can see in this case have actually wiped out an entire uh, allele from a population, so or at least a, a phenotype at this stage, maybe the allele is still sitting in there as a heterozygous form in one of those little brown uh, bugs. And then natural selection. And so we've, we've talked obviously about natural selection as the way in which there are some specific um, selection pressures that impact on the variation within populations and therefore take advantage of the fact that reproduction will allow those alleles to persist and perhaps to increase in their proportions within the population. So this is a nice little range, uh, a nice little graphic to come back to, to have a look at in terms of some of the different sources of variation, the ways in which the allele uh, proportions in populations can change. Uh, and just to help you to identify the differences that can occur at both the individual and the population level. Now there's a mathematical relationship that explains some of the ways in which populations change over time. In fact, the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is a is a, is a mathematical relationship that suggests that uh, in most stable populations, there will not be a significant change in the proportion of alleles over time. There are two Hardy-Weinberg equations. 
and they both uh, relate the the frequency basically of either the alleles um, or the um, genotypes to um, the population as a whole. So these numbers always come out to one because they basically represent 100% of the population. So what we talk about is the fact that, for example, if you add the number of individuals that are homozygous for a trait, um, homozygous dominant for a trait, with the number that are homozygous recessive for the trait, and then uh, twice the number that are heterozygous for the um, trait, then you end up with 100%. And this is one of the ways that we can mathematically use um, the frequencies of alleles, or at least the phenotypes. So we can see, often we can see usually from the um, recessive condition, because obviously a recessive condition is only going to be expressed um, as a phenotype if it is homozygous recessive. So we can kind of get this information. And we can also use the other relationship, which in this case would be P plus Q equals one, which is specifically relating to the alleles. Now, I didn't, don't know about Hardy Weinberg. I don't, I'm not sure that there's going to be a lot of questions that you're going to need to, to deal with in relation to Hardy Weinberg. And think what I might do is put a little sort of sub video on Hardy Weinberg just to give you a little bit of an idea of how you might use these questions, walk you through an example, um, and then we might leave it at that. This is a, a, a big overview of, uh, in fact, a nice way to close this section on mutation and change in in DNA and what impact that can have in natural populations. Of course, what we've got to do from here is move on to biotechnology and have a look at some of the ways that we have actually changed some of the LL frequencies and created new ones um, in natural populations. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching.